Hi, my name is David Albert, and I'm the board chairman of Friendly Water for the World in Olympia, Washington. It's a nonprofit organization that uh, promotes the use of biosand water filters and other um, health and sanitation practices around the world. And with me today is my friend Adrian Niangalo from Burundi, the heart of Africa. And uh, he is the co-founder of the Healing and Rebuilding Our Communities program in Burundi. And also with me today is Ginny Stern, who works for the Office of Drinking Water for the state of Washington. She's a hydrogeologist and treasurer of Friendly Water for the World. Adrian, welcome to Olympia. I know this is your fourth time here. Thank you. It's uh, great to have you here. I'm very happy to be with you. Too. And uh, I thought maybe you'd like to explain a little bit about um, healing and rebuilding our communities or, or what problems this particular program is, is meant to deal with in Burundi. Um, HEROC, as you have said, Healing and Rebuilding Our Community program, was just a, uh, a, a program, just a model of training we put together as Africans in Burundi and Rwanda as a way of uh, trying to find a way of getting healed from the trauma we got from the war or killings that happened in our countries. Uh, as the history tells, Rwanda witnessed uh, genocide in 1994, but one year before that in Burundi, we experienced really massive killings where around um, 200,000 people died in you know, Hutu and the Tutsi, those two groups. Some would say or say ethnicities, but I just say groups or identities have been just in an ongoing conflict since 1960s up to even now. So really similar to the situation in Rwanda, and many Americans know about the situation in Rwanda, but not about the situation in Burundi. The, the two, and the two countries are right next to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes they say they are brothers or sisters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I know, it's true, but because in each of the two countries we have the same identities, Hutu, Tutsi, and Twa. And the proportion, you know, Hutu are the majority in both two countries, uh, Tutsi is the second and uh, Twa the minor group. So how does water, which is what we do, friendly water for the world, making water safe, how does that support the work you're doing with your communities on reconciliation? Uh, that project comes to offer a, a way of keeping with the reconciliation and the healing process. How? When um, people have been trained in our hero workshops together, they seek for him. They seek for re-establishing or rebuilding broken relationship. You know, in three days, not everything is repaired. People need to get time together. People need to find something that will just uh, gather them. So, by doing, um, working, uh, building this uh, best and filters, you know, folks come together. By just looking for materials, by making the walls, just you know, uh, watering them and washing the sun, making sure that's correct, joking around, remembering about what happened when they were just suffering. You know, we have different groups. We have ex-combatants who participated. Mm -hmm. You know, in what happened as uh, armed people. We have demobilized soldiers who were in the uh, government army. And we have civilians who didn't participate. So those two, three groups actually uh, said, no, you are the ones who caused this. You are the ones who did this. Then, but when they're just working together, they find a way to joke around, and which is a That's good way. So they to come together to build the filters, but in the process of working together, they begin to explore the hurts and the legacy and, and, and find a way forward. Exactly, exactly. That's one of the way of... See, and you have the trauma from the war, but you also have the trauma from waterborne diseases. Typhoid and cholera and bacterial dysentery, um, all of which can be dealt with by the biosand filters? Sure, sure. Um, as we say in my country, Burundi, the same as in Rwanda, that the river doesn't kill, meaning I can just 
drink the water from the river, I can drink uh, water from the rain, I don't care if it's treated or not, I'm sure it's not going to cause me any harm. But we have lost so many people, still special children, and we didn't know that it was just coming mm -hmm. from um, waterborne disease. So the, the sentiment is inaccurate in many places, that the water isn't safe and people get sick. Mm -hmm. And so you're trying to make it a true statement sure. by treating the water. Yeah. yeah, I have heard that in the areas you work, as many as 300 children under the age of five out of a thousand born will die before the age of five, most of them from bad water. I could just say there are more because when pe you know, kid kids die, you know, families are not that encouraged to go to declare that someone had died. So it's not even in the death registry, there's so many. You know, people are so upset and they don't find any interest to, to go and declare somebody who died. Mm -hmm. So there are many, of, many, mm -hmm. no, no more, more than that. So, so infant mortality, childhood death, from unsafe water, challenges in the communities where people represented different factions and sides mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. coming together to make clean water to share, yeah. to make their children grow healthy together. Absolutely, just to allow kids to have a better life, I mean, like being healthy, you know, not just uh, missing classes, you know, by getting the treated water. Right. Families would be sure that they are children, even you know, adults who mm -hmm. are still living with them, are not going to fall sick from contaminated water. And that will save them money, that will save them time, that will give them joy, you know, to <laughs> well, I mean, I know that when I went to school, if I had a bellyache, I wasn't going to be able to study well, I wasn't going to be able to learn well. So just imagine what would happen if you had a bellyache all the time. See? It would be almost impossible to learn. Hard to concentrate to what teachers are saying. Right. And I know that there is something, I, I work in public health, and there is something called the, a parasitic stress, so that when a child's brain is developing, usually before the age of five, the energy that could be going into brain development is energy that's being used to fight off parasites, typhoid, mm -hmm. cholera. Uh, bacterial dysentery, and so that energy is not available to build children's brains. So by the time they get to school, they'll, they are already behind. Good point. Good point. In, in Washington, we are blessed with good clean water that most all of us have access to. Yeah. And both David and I work with the Department of Health and have worked with the Department of Health on drinking water, and we talk about safe and reliable water. Meaning mm. that it is there when we need it, and it is safe to drink. And so it's it's interesting to see that in your project, as you work on rebuilding communities, you're focusing on the same thing: that it is yeah. there when I need it, and it is safe and reliable. Safe and reliable, good. I would just say also in Burundi, it's safe and loving water. Safe and loving, quite friendly water. It's friendly water, <laughs> exactly. You know. Uh, with these groups who have been in at war, you know, hunting, hunting actually, I think one You will have to tell us how to say friendly water in the language Kirundi. Ah, amazi amagenzi. Amazi amaganzi. Amazi magenzi. Magenzi friendly. Amazi magenzi. Amazi magenzi. I like that. There has this, you know, mm, taste. Not normal test because it has you know the compassion, it it's sweetness. A sweetness, yes, mm -hmm. coming from the heart, from forgiveness, coming from the trust. That's yes. I would say, yeah, uh, amazing again. And mm -hmm. you know, an ex combatant offering such water to somebody who they have been fighting in the bush and so on means a lot. Yeah. Water is often in many cultures used as a metaphor. Mm -hmm. So that, for example, we talk about uh, the water of forgiveness. The waters of life. And water is a promise. Mm -hmm. And you know, when I think about the work that we try to do, Friendly Water for the World tries to do, it's not that it's only providing clean, safe, reliable water, but we're making it possible for communities to become convivial. Mm. to be mm. good neighbors to each mm. other, to become mm. friends. Mm. And as we reach out from this part of the world, 
we make friends. I've made very good friend here, my friend Adrian. And, uh, yeah. In the, in, even in this area of Tumwater in Thurston County, where we are today, yeah. we, our history is tied around readily available, clean flowing water. It's yeah. a history here called artesian, which is water that bubbles from the ground. Mm. And the early community here in the, came around the watering places where the water just bubbles out of the ground and they would meet there and get water to take home and do business and trade. And the community that we live in right now was really formed because the water uh -huh. was there. Mm -hmm. So it makes perfect sense to see a community that has been facing so many challenges, mm -hmm. both medical and health and community-based, mm -hmm. look to rebuild community yeah, 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 with yeah. water. Yeah, exactly. That was, I just picture Mutaho place, community, where we started this uh, uh, biosan filters in the very rural area of Burundi the first time. You know, I remember Mutaho, the first time I went there after the war was 1998. Oh, it was a mess. Houses destroyed. And you know, people yeah. have left their you know properties. You could not recognize. You know, slowly people came back one by one, and then now life is just coming. I can just see people. I mean, folks going to the center. You know where they make these filters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's where they go to get something which gonna allow them to have treated water. Amazi Magenzi. Yeah. You know, I just have a dream, like, you know, for people who come from all parts of Burundi and to Mutaho. And uh, they're going to just form this community, you know. So this, from, the, from the ashes of a community that was destroyed uh -huh. by the strife yeah. becomes the nucleus to offer to other communities the resources to be yeah. safe. You know, I've always hoped even, you know, I think about the U.S., of course, where we have soldiers coming back who are suffering major trauma from the war. Mm -hmm. And while people like the Veterans Administration are working very hard to try to provide good physical, uh, physical care and psychological health care, it's still one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. It's usually one person with one person. It's mm -hmm. very important to work one person and one person. Mm. But it would be even better if we could find out here ways for people to engage a community in healing. There, I mean, there is individual healing, mm. but there is also community healing. Uh, you know, sometimes I think that Burundi may have a great lesson to teach us. When you talk about the service that the ex-combatants mm. offer to their community, people who were potentially their enemy before, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They come back, and as a part of their healing, mm. they are offering the device to provide clean water for another family. Mm. And so they're consciously giving. Perhaps you might talk a little bit about the project that you're working right now with um, Friendly Water on, which is the um, where we here in the states are working with your cooperative mm. there, where people there are making yeah. filters. Yeah. Um, with the first training and the first building, I mean, construction of the filters, and people tried it. And they tested the water, how good it was, and how different it was from the one they used to drink. You know, some of the folks in Mutaw were able to fetch water from the tap. But when they fitted water from the tap and tested different from the one they used to say, I said, ah, oh, no, these materials are so well made you know there is something it's like of course they're the ones who made it mm -hmm. so they know <laughs> that True. it doesn't rely on someone else they made it, <laughs> no, no, they made no, no, it themselves no. they made it so from there uh, community members asked for at least one in a family of ten uh, when we say family in africa you don't just mean my kids and my wife you know many of them will just leave a circle Mm -hmm. You find the you know, parents who have, let's say, 10 kids, and the argument, the uh, grown up kids, yes. uh, children who got married, family, yes. yeah, they make their families. And then orphans, 11% of Peruvians oh, yeah, are orphans. You know? 
Lola Thieves will just come and stay with me. I don't I mean mm -hmm. it's a part of my family. They have a space. Yes. And if I have just you know a better situation, I just welcome them and they are my children, they are my nephew, my cousins. So we're together. So these people are just asking, no, we know <laughs> that this guy, this man, once he went to church, we won't just bring him water. And we went to Pastor Sarah, for example, she's the one who got the first filter. Ah, uh, she got the filter. <laughs> she got the first one. Pastor Sarah is an old friend of mine. Yeah, oh, then, the and then this Susan made, and then people made it. And then she was given the first filter. So she's a pastor. Everybody would just. To get her water from Pastor Sarah's house. Yeah, and from there, people say, oh, how can we have that filter that Pastor Sarah has? Because the water from Pastor Sarah is something else. So that's how we end up having so many demands oh, for these people. Right. I know that we have now, we have stories from a hundred families that are willing, now this is a place people are poor. I mean, yeah. the per capita income is about 125 yeah. US dollars a year. Poverty yeah. is high. And yet they are willing to spend $27 each to buy a biosand filter for their home. And basically, they've asked Friendly Water and our supporters to come forward and match that. We actually raise some additional funds so that the people who cannot afford anything, yes, or, for, or, for, for orphan, or for orphanages or clinics, that we can build additional filters. But, you know, for, for most Americans, $27 is not an awful lot of money. But for, 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 for the One people... One-fifth of my annual income, if you said... I have to put up one fifth of my money. income for we would be mm, we right. would be amazed. And mm, here they are, they mm, see the mm, value mm. of having clean water. And not only did they see it, but they found a way to build it for themselves. Right. Yeah, let me tell you one of the motivations that really push or bring these people to invest in these futures. You see you have family of five. And no not all of them, let's say three or two of them just get sick yeah. of typhoid or diarrhea. We had to take them to the next clinic. Mm -hmm. And at the clinic, they may not have enough medicine. Yes. So you're gonna spend money waiting for the medicine to come and uh, you know you, you don't go to work or cultivate. So the other kids you just go be, you know, starving, you know, at home. Yeah. So why uh, they say, Oh, as we heard from Pastor Sarah Selene and others who have now the filters that no typhoid, no diarrhea anymore, we will do all we could or we can to pay for that mm -hmm. right? so that we may get the filter mm -hmm. in our homes. So that we may not go to the cleaning for a week, two weeks when we just miss time to Right. Work. Yeah, we're not at, at school, not at work. Right. We can't take can't sell things at the market. So, the yeah. stress, and, and the uh, way we look at it here for Friendly Water for the World here is, you know, we look at the needs in the world and we look at all the money that's given for charity for water in mm -hmm. the world. It's wonderful work, but it's not enough. Mm -hmm. We have to make partnerships, local partnerships with people in other parts of the world where they can take responsibility for making sure that they have clean water. And that we provide support education and um, financial support and training to get it started but that the success is what your community puts in and the commitment mm -hmm. is because it makes a difference in their life yeah. it's not hard to convince people to do it because they see the difference let's say that i have been privileged to have this chance to be in the states you know as i'm working with friends peace teams um, but when I do this uh, initially, oh, I help people to access such a kind of uh, uh, filters. I want them to own yes. this. I want them to be creative on how they can maintain this. That's how I really do all I can that Mutaho Cooperative mm -hmm. can just stand on its own. Oh. And Adrian knows that I also want people to paint their filters because I want it to be the most beautiful thing in their homes. <laughs> <laughs> True, you know. Um, you have just to, uh, let's say, 
to express this joy you have, you know, by decorating the filter. Say, I don't know, I'm gonna just put eyes. I'm gonna put <laughs> 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 yeah, We have one filter in Olympia that has eyes and a nose, so. Yeah. But we have seen. And then what, what my kids are gonna draw on the filter? <laughs> I just give them a quiz. Exactly. <laughs> give them each one side. True, I have followed them, okay. so there you go. go. <laughs> and maybe we should um, introduce everyone to our filter. Yes. Because this is a model of what the filter right. looks This is like. not the actual filter, this, this is the is actual half-size scale model. Yeah. So really, From the inside. So, and you can look through it, and, and what it has is at the very bottom, it has gravel, large cobbles, and some medium-sized gravel. And then a fine grain, in this case it's the white material, that's a sand that's of a fine grain and then water would sit above it and there's a plate here that allows us to keep from disturbing the top layer here. It's kind of a diffuser plate, it rains. And the way the system works is water gets poured into the top and it fills this whole thing and the pressure of the water on top pushes the water that's in the sand out the hose and through the top and into a clean container to collect the water. Exactly, and the process... <laughs> no electricity, no, no moving parts. parts. This is built in, in country out of cement. Gravel and rocks and dirts are found locally and people work to separate the coarse material from the fine material. You spend hours. And they spend minutes. lots of time shaking, I've done it. shaking sand washing. and dirt, making washing to make it clean so that it's uniform. And over time, um, over the over a few weeks of operation, a, in this top layer of water, friendly bacteria form that help eat other bugs. Mm. And so all now they wouldn't be friendly if you actually drank them. You wouldn't want to drink them. <laughs> but right now they're our friends because they eat the nastier bugs. And so over the, over the time that water moves through, there's there's digestion that goes on. Bugs get killed by other bugs. You in fact you kill most of the typhoid. Cholera, large bacteria, E. coli, uh, Shigella, right in the top. Right and, in the top. And then what isn't killed off here gets mm. filtered out as it moves through the sand. So that, and it also, there's no oxygen in this section because it's always full of water. Mm. So anything that survives the filtration, many of it, the bugs, particularly biological things, die because of lack of oxygen. They tend right. to live best in oxygen environments. So that by the time you get through the filter, and out the top, over the life of yeah. what it operates, these filters are, ex when run properly, are between 95 and 98 percent effective at removing some of the most dangerous contaminants that make people sick: cholera, diphtheria, typhoid, E. coli, things that are in surface water that people may be drinking, mm. and they don't come out. And the operation of the filter is very minimal. All you have to do is keep it clean, pour water in, mm -hmm. keep a clean container to collect the water in, use it. The best thing you can do for it is to use it regularly. Because it keeps those friendly it bacteria keeps everybody happy. friendly, happy and eating mm -hmm. other bacteria. One of the interesting things, it works on viruses too. The, the sharp, the sand actually, it's not beach sand, it's sand from a high river bank or for a quarry pit mm -hmm. and it has sharp points. And the sharp points of the sand have a slight electrical charge, That's I learned. the fourth way that water is treated. Right, and what happens is when mm -hmm. viruses go through the top, viruses like hepatitis A. I once had hepatitis A from bad water in India, so this is of concern to me. Mm -hmm. Hepatitis A gloms on, the electrical charge gloms onto the sand, and because there's no light, no air, and no food, it, will it keep dies. It long enough to die. It dies right there. So it works kind of like the filtration does, and so what you create is this wonderful environment in a very small place that fits in a house that will make your water biologically safe to drink to protect your family from diarrhea and many of the other water and it tastes diseases. better too. and it tastes good it also under certain circumstances can be modified to impact other aspects but where we use it mostly where we try to encourage people is for the bacteriological purity because in, in some places, you might have water that comes from a pipe, but mm -hmm. it's not treated before it gets there. Mm -hmm. It may come from a community well. Mm -hmm. It may come from a riverbank mm -hmm. or from a pond where animals are fed as well right. because water is where you need it, True. but it 
may not, it may be there, but it may not be safe. <laughs> One of the things that happens is, you know, we go on the internet. And then we, we we're always looking for data on water, and we'll look at Wikipedia, of course, like everyone else. And, and we'll look at the data, and you'll have this data from the United Nations that talks about improved water sources. Yes. And then you go to the places where they have the improved water source, and improved water source can mean, for example, simply that it comes out of a tap. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean that the water is safe to drink. Not from mm-hmm. the standards we're used to. And, and there are people, you know, I know, who yeah, told yeah. me in Burundi, where the tap water has worms sure. and, and typhoid yeah. and, and coming right out of the tap. But if you read the United Nations data, that's you would think water. that's an improved water source. It's, that was one of the more powerful stories of the people who were asking for filters and wanted to buy them was the, the young man who was talking about the fact that they get water yeah. through a pipe, but that he was drinking water and there was a worm in his glass and it came from a pipe. And when I shared that story <laughs> with some people here, they were just amazed and it stops everyone in their tracks because we just assume mm. if it comes out of a pipe here, mm. it's safe. It's uh, not always. And that's not always true. Everywhere, right? not. And, and then the other part is in many places where in, 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 in communities like Mutaho where the water doesn't come in a pipe. Yeah. People walk a long ways to bring water to their house and if the water they bring isn't safe, they're they, still they, gonna get sick. Yeah, they have open containers. Exactly. So those basins. Exactly. Yeah. So they carry water from an yeah. unsafe yeah. source. Yeah. It's water, they need it uh-huh. and they either drink it without treating it or they spend a lot of time boiling it, mm-hmm. which costs firewood, which mm-hmm. is, ex- you have to go gather wood. Mm-hmm. So it's, by having safe water in the house, mm-hmm. you reduce the amount of time you have to spend cooking. Yeah. You save money because you're not buying bottled water mm-hmm. if you were. Mm-hmm. You have a ready supply if someone is ill or sick to mm-hmm. not make them sick again. Mm-hmm. Clean water so that if they're recovering from an illness, they're not being reinfected by the water that they're drinking. And, so and, and one of the things that, of course, goes with something like a biosand water filter is you're very important to have good personal hygiene and community sanitation. I know mm. you teach that. We do. Because it, it's important. Very, very important. And uh, we need to remind people uh, how they need to keep that in mind. Because we don't just offer them the filter, mm-hmm. but we need to know how to maintain the water clean. Exactly, and sometimes it's as simple as the water you collect in this bucket is not the bucket you use for clean water, because yeah. that was dirty, mm-hmm. or as simple as here's how you handle household sanitation, how you get rid of waste, how to make sure where you dispose of waste is different than where you keep your water. Mm-hmm. Washing hands, one of the most mm-hmm. powerful things that people yeah. can use. Um, those are all part the of soap. the training. You know, soap and teaching people about how powerful, how important that is to be healthy. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to spend the money for clean water, <laughs> spend the time to do the rest of the yeah, practices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then of course keep your sleep. animals away from the water source. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, no, we're gonna just hire people to just walk around the community, have just two days per week doing such a kind of... Helping people know how to use they it. Know, yeah. I mean, I know I've seen places in India, I've, I've done biosand water filter work in India, but people will have the tank, which will be by the temple usually, but they'll wash their animals oh. in the same tank that they're going to be used for bathing and to drink. Well, Adrian, uh, I'm wondering if there's anything further, we're getting to the end of our time here, if there's anything else you'd like to say to our friends here in Olympia and the rest of the world. Just to say how delighted I've been, how joyful I am, and how um, happy to find such warm, welcome, hearted heart, just to really join hands to provide a better life, a hope. Yes. A hope for me. And we have a word for that, and he has taught me. Yes. Turukumwe. Turukumwe. Turukumwe means we are all together. Turukumwe. Turukumwe. Thank you.